Well, I've been thrifting again. Big surprise. Hey wild things, it's Cypress. Currently, I'm on a mission to zhuzh up the bathroom and redecorate the living room. And that means regular thrift trips to ferret out what I need. And while I'm there, I might as well look at everything. For today's haul, I was in Lancaster, Ohio. My first stop was the Habitat Restore, and this was my first time in there. I was impressed. OMG, the lighting. They had lamps and ceiling lights and sconces, and some were newer and some were vintage. I've been looking for a small storage cabinet for the bathroom, but everything was either too deep or was meant to embed into the wall. I didn't get any shots of the furniture section, but that was well stocked and the prices were reasonable through the whole store. I didn't find anything for myself this trip, but I'll be adding this place to my rounds. And then on to the Goodwill. I always find something cool here. And today I walked in and <gasps> dollar each on clothes. This is gonna be a good trip. This bowl was cute but it was made from resin. I'm not into that. And I like the look of these green vases, but they had sharp seams from the mold, so I'm guessing they were not vintage. No maker's marks either. Yeah, I tried that already. Didn't work out. Now what I did find, when I first walked in, I checked out the furniture. <laughs> So I'm still on my mission to find little tables of various heights and sizes, and at $2.99, I couldn't pass this up. Yeah, it's pretty ratty looking. It definitely needs to be sanded down, fresh coat of paint, probably something that's not diaper brown, and I don't mean the color of the diaper, I mean, yeah. But this stool does actually have something going for it. If you look here, there's a curve where it could have just been straight, so the detailing here is just a little bit above and beyond. It is gonna need to be tightened a little bit, but when I looked, those are old flathead screws. So now I'm wondering how old this piece is because why would anybody use a flathead screw to assemble it un unless it's actually old? Hello, little spider eggs. I wonder if those are dead or they're gonna hatch. Anyway, no, no maker's mark, so I think it's gonna be pretty handy. And uh, no, I promise this is not a theme this time. <laughs> oh, okay, I did find something for the bathroom. Now, it's a smaller bathroom. There's not a lot of storage in there. There's not a lot of room to put storage. And I've been looking for a small shelf that I could put in there and maybe put some decor on there, a candle, when I have a candle at bath. And everything I find has a heart cutout on it. There are heart cutouts on everything. Why? It's way too cutesy for me. If you like hearts, great, but for me, it's too much cheese factor. And then I found, perfect, solid wood, no hearts. It does have a plate rail on it. I might fill that in before I paint it. I think what I'm gonna do is just paint it the same color as the trim in the bathroom, and that way it'll just blend in. Best of all, $1.99, two bucks. I got myself my shelf. As I made my way through housewares, I found this candle for $2.99. Hi, little man. He's helping today. Okay then. It's not in perfect shape. There's a few scuffs. There's a little bit of staining. But this is hi again. But nice big white candle, three wick, and it's narrower than a lot of the three wick ones. I thought it was unusual. I don't usually see this diameter. It's never been used, so I think that is really cool, and anyway, I think it's gonna look gorgeous, and I don't have... Little man. Ah, so, unusual diameter.
Okay, so as I was saying, it's a really nice big candle. It's gonna give me a lot of burn time. Oh, Pier 1. Do Pier 1 candles burn well, evenly? I don't know, I haven't had a Pier 1 candle before. I guess we'll find out. Anyway, this happened. And a candle holder, of course. This one is cast iron, or meant to feel cast iron. 99 cents has interesting feet on it, and I think it will look good sitting with other candle holders that are similar but not the same. Get like a variety going. Anyway, gives me options. Yeah, I have a thing for candle holders. It's a thing. It. I'm not going to say it's a problem because I enjoy it, but it's a thing. Only 49 cents. I mean, come on. It's metal, but it has this weird green coloring that's meant to look like patina, I think. I don't have any other dark green candle holders, but I realized that if this green turns out to be a problem, it's real easy to spray paint this with higher temperature paint, and it'll blend in with so many of the other candlesticks that I have, so... And then... I found a decorative bowl. I think it's aluminum, it's fairly light. It is by threshold, metal, so it doesn't specify what kind, food safe, and made in India. I don't have anything like this, and I really like the, the texturing that they've done on here, and I think it will look really good. I'm wanting to use a lot of silver and reflective surfaces in my living room, so I thought, mm-hmm. Oops, does have a scuff in there. Either way, for 99 cents, I'm calling that a win. And then the weirdest thing happened. I saw these. There's three of them. And I just, I don't know, they looked so cool. I don't decorate with red. I haven't done anything with red, but this color just kind of spoke to me. It makes me think of the color of clotted blood, <laughs> only a little lighter. That's kind of a gross comparison, but anyway, <laughs> the whole set was $2.99. There's nothing wrong with it. It's in good shape, and the lids have a plastic gasket or silicone, probably plastic, so that they are sealable. In fact, I gotta clean this one. It was sealed with moisture in it. I can smell it. It's kind of musty. I don't know where this is gonna take me with the red. I, I, I don't know, I'm just kind of speechless. These really drew me in. They're ceramic and they have a wooden top with a brass handle. So these are from Pier 1. Apparently it was a Pier 1 day. I'm kind of living for it. Oh no. We are missing a foot here, but I have some of those that I can stick on here, so that's not an issue. I can replace the footies. I don't know. Am I, am I crazy? There's just something about these I couldn't say no to and the price was right. So I put these in my cart thinking, what the heck am I thinking? I don't have anything else that's red. <laughs> They're almost exactly the same color. They probably came from the same house. $2.99 for the whole stack. I guess I'm well on my way to having red accents in my kitchen, and I don't know how I feel about that, but that's where we're going. Never thought about putting food on red plates, so I don't know how that's gonna look. So, I don't know, but we're gonna be having fun playing with color. Well, I guess I didn't take every red thing that I saw. But this would have come with me if it had been any nicer than a sweatshirt. However, I did have luck with the dollar clothing sale. I picked this sweater up. It's a really nice duster length sweater by self-esteem. I was a little worried it was going to be too scratchy to be comfortable, that I'd need to wear a long sleeve shirt underneath it, but actually it's fine. It's not cashmere, but it's not scratchy. So when you can close it with this thong tie, which is a nice touch. I think I was drawn to it because of the metallic fibers. 
and I was worried it was going to be a little stiff, but it drapes nicely. I think it's just overall a good look. Now, the sizing on this says extra large, and it is a little big for me, but I don't think it's that big on me. So self-esteem is not living up to its name with the sizing. That's for sure. But overall, I think this is a really fun garment, and for a dollar, it's a really good find. I went back and forth on this one, but I finally threw it in my cart because that collar is just everything. These big silver grommets and the soft shoestring drawing it together, it's super cute. I like it. The brand on this is Love at First Sight, and I gotta say, it was Love at First Sight for this. Now the color on this, I'm not sure what to even call it. It's gray at first glance, but it's got a lot of lavender in it, especially depending on the lighting. And these bell sleeves, I'm all about it. Super fun. When I tried this on, overall just the way it fits feels really good to me. I realize the middle of summer is not really sweater weather, but it's really good timing for looking for sweaters because nobody wants to look for sweaters because everybody's miserable in the heat, so it's good timing for me. And then I went back and forth on this, but I did pick it up. This is orange, but in some lighting this might look a little pink. It's a very soft orange, kind of almost a pastel orange, if there is such a thing. I'm just not into pink, and I just know somebody's gonna say, ooh, I love that pink sweater, and I'm gonna die a little inside, but it is orange. This has a lot going for it. It drapes so nicely. It's so cozy. The detail in the knitting is just so cool. The way the lines work in different directions I think is really flattering. Of course it's repeated on the back. I think it's fairly eye-catching, as subtle as it is, and I love a duster length cardigan. It's just kind of one of my things. Not that I'm looking forward to the cold, but I am looking forward to, as long as it is going to get cold, I'll have some nice sweaters to wear. And I found a nice top. This is by Studio Y. I picked this up because of the color and because this particular style of shirt works really well for me and I'm happy I did. It looks really good. It's kind of almost got an innocent look to it, which I'm not usually very comfortable with, but I don't think it goes all the way over to naive, which is what we want to avoid. The neckline is just about perfect. It lets my detail on my tank top show through. And it's got a little tie in the back. I'm not very happy because this dark brown detail does not continue on the back of the neck. <sighs> However, because the tie continues on the back and the trim at the hem continues all the way around, I'll forgive it not continuing on the back of the neck. I mean, I paid a dollar for it. And I found a skirt. I really don't have a lot of skirts and I'm trying to fix that. This is by Style & Co. This is a medium. I really think it's more of a large, but it is snug enough that it stays on and doesn't want to fall off so I can wear it. The heaviness of the fabric coupled with the spring gives it this really nice sort of bounce when you walk in it. Funnily enough, because this skirt is long enough and because this is a little big on me, this could double as a swim cover. Multitasking! I like how complicated and yet structured the pattern is. It works for me. I don't know. I think for a dollar it's a fantastic find. And while I was at it I snagged a couple of tank tops. These are the shelf kind so if you're just bumming around the house you can just wear these and you're supported. These are by Aeropostale. Aeropostale? I don't know how to pronounce it actually. And I think this must be a teeny bopper brand because these are both size medium and they definitely don't fit me like a medium. Even so they're very comfortable and will make a really good base layer and I love the colors. Now I don't have a lot of denim jeans specifically. I went ahead and picked some jeans up. I didn't bother trying them on and that can go very badly. I got two pair of jeans. This first pair is by S.O. Is that the brand name? S.O. Significant Other? So? I, I don't know. 
what made me grab these is that they're long. It's really hard to find longs in the thrift stores. I was really sweating it, trying to put these on. There is not enough room for me to put a piece of paper in my pocket with these jeans. Which surprised me because they say they're size 7. I think somebody's lying. Nevertheless, I got them on and they're real nice and snug down the top part of the leg and then they flare nicely. They're a good boot cut. They're a low rise. Give me a nice bottom line. The only problem I have is, of course, my midriff area, but I am losing weight, so maybe in a couple more pounds I'll be even happier with these. I will just expect these to fit better and better as we go. And the second pair is a 5.6, but it actually has slightly more room for me than the 7s, so women's sizing, I mean, good grief. These are by Rue 21. They're pretty comfortable, they're stretchy, so easier to move around in. However, the pockets end up really far down on the backside, and I think that's kind of a weird look. It gives you kind of a dumpy backside. So I'm not sure about that, but overall, I think they fit well and they look all right. So now I've got jeans that I can wear. Okay, so that was my Goodwill haul. After Goodwill, I zipped over to Ohio Thrift. I guess I'm getting really good at passing up cute shoes. The hardware on these wasn't real. They were priced way too high for how cheaply they're made. And they were scuffed badly. Ugh, so sad. But there were other cute shoes there. Specifically, these, they're by Liz Claiborne. I don't think these were worn until I put them on to film them outside. They do each have a little scuff in the back. Don't know if I'll be able to get that out or not, but at $8 for a pair of shoes that I don't think anybody's ever worn more than to try on. I mean, the color. How could I pass these up with this color? and I found some flip-flops. Now, <laughs> the thing is, I have had the same two pair of flip-flops for about 10 to 15 years, and they've disintegrated. So I actually am in the market for some flip-flops. I got these for 99 cents. They're wet seal. Again, the color. Now, they're not the most comfortable flip-flops I've ever had on. However, there's this plastic situation at the, what is this, the frog? Where your toes go. I don't know, is that supposed to be removed or is that supposed to stay? Do you know? Does anybody know? I don't know, because that might make these more comfortable. But they are cute. And these also were 99 cents, and these are more of the traditional cheapy, standard flip-flop. They're very comfortable, and they're brand new. Imagine 8 is the brand on these. Uh, yes, again with the color. I was having a bright blue day. Uh, red at Goodwill, blue at Ohio Thrift. I also spent a lot of time in housewares. This was nice, but so not my speed. And they wanted too much for these vintage jars. And there's another hard shelf. OMG, they're everywhere. And there were lots of unused candles, but nothing that grabbed me. But then, I saw something familiar. I was so excited to see this. I have several pieces of this particular false graph. I haven't even pulled the tape off of this to see if there's chips or not, but $2.99. I haven't seen any of this for years, at least not where I've been looking. I don't really know what you do with this pot. It must be just a serving pot. I wouldn't, I don't think you cook with it. Oh, oddly enough, it doesn't say false graph on the bottom. I wonder if it's a dupe. Hmm. Maybe it's a dupe. At any rate, it goes with my false graph collection, so I'm still happy with it. That was exciting for me. And then further back in housewares, I found one of the full-size plates. And this one is false graph. It is rather scuffed up. I don't know why. What makes a plate so scuffed up like that? Is it cleaning products or is people being that aggressive with silverware? You got some aggressive eaters out there. All of the plates I have in this pattern are 
salad plates. What do you call the smaller plates? I call them cake plates because that's what I eat off of them. Super happy and excited with this. I don't know if this is exciting for you or not, but this is my pattern that I love and to find pieces in it just, it just made me happy. And back to the mission of zhuzhing the bathroom. I don't have anywhere to hang up my robe or towels, and so I've been looking for hooks. I have really been struggling to find anything, and then I saw this. I'm not real keen on the uh, cottage farmhouse look, especially that faux farmhouse situation. I just... But I got looking at this, and the leaves are a little bit more stylized than that style. They're almost a tiny bit Art Nouveau, which isn't my style either, but I do like it a lot better than faux farmhouse. So this is growing on me, and I think it'll provide a lot of towel and robe hanging situation for my bathroom. Okay. This is not exciting, but I'm happy to finally have some mixing bowls. These are just stainless mixing bowls. $2.99, $2.99, 99 cents, 99 cents, 99 cents. A victory for me trying to make cookies or other confections. Just a small win for the kitchen. Now, when I picked this item up, I was just sort of browsing and I picked it up because it looked cool. I didn't think I was actually going to take it home. But what I thought was a resin item is solid metal. I think it's solid copper. Maybe it's brass coated with copper. Maybe that's what it is. It was in a TJ Maxx. It says that it's made in India, but it's heavy. I don't know what I need a wall pocket for. This is going to be some experimentation for me to figure out how this will work, but the copper color is definitely my vibe. I think it looks really good, so we will see what comes of this. Maybe like a little LED light so we get some accent lighting coming out. And finally, I found a couple of items of clothing. This was in the skirts, and I was very drawn to the color and the pattern. I would have really liked it as a skirt. However, it turned out to be pants. <laughs> $2.99. Capriccio Granadino. Granadino. I'm sorry, I'm butchering the pronunciation on that. You'd think I'd be able to figure that out. Anyway, this was made in Taiwan for a shop in Spain. It's really fun, very boho, very world troubled, but I think with this strap here, I'm pretty sure this is meant to be a onesie. And you know, I think it looks good that way too. I don't even need to use these ties around my neck because it's actually secure enough all by itself to stay up. This is outside of any other kind of clothing that I've owned before, but I like it and I think it's really fun. Probably will mostly wear it as pants myself. I can do that, right? I can play with it. However, just because it was meant to be worn one way doesn't mean I can't wear it the other, right? Or am I just weird? But super fun, can't wait to style them. And then another weird find, yellow drapey pants. If you've been paying attention, recently when my mother was thrifting with me, we got her a pair of yellow palazzo pants. So, no, this wasn't intentional. The universe is just trying to tell me something. I don't know what. They're not palazzo pants. They're just kind of wide-legged. I love the rich colors. The fabric's really drapey. I don't have a maker's mark on here. It has been removed, so we don't get a brand on this. They were $4.99. Who doesn't need a pair of yellow drapey pants? <laughs> so that's the thing now. Okay, that's everything. What are your favorites? And if you've made it this far, how about leaving an exploding bomb emoticon or type bomb in the comment section? because you are the bomb for hanging with me for the long haul. Everybody else can just wonder what the heck is happening in the comment feed. You're awesome. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video, and until then, keep the shopping wild.
the way the lines Aeropostale I'm not cool enough to know how to pronounce that, sorry Granadino Capriccio Granadino Capriccio uh, and, and it's um And there's a little uh Where'd it go? Granit. Capriccio. Capriccio. Granadino. 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 I don't know where the emphasis goes. I'm sorry. Hi. Can you sit down? Yeah. I don't suppose you want to be helpful and sit still. Yeah. Is that better? Nope. Okay. Now that I probably have cat hairs all over me. 